Have you been to New York lately? Mm -hmm. Were you panhandled by one of those Mufasa costumed characters at Times Square? No, I wasn't <laughs> stopped by a Mufasa. Hello everyone, I'm Heidi Lay, your collector animation, bringing animation and collectibles together here on Collector's Cafe. How did you like working with her whoopiness, Whoopi Goldberg? Oh, with Whoopi Goldberg. She's quite a character, definitely. She uh, gave a lot of growl, a lot of character, a lot of pizzazz to one of our hyenas. Our guest today is Roger Allers, co-director of the classic Disney film Lion King and the writer of Aladdin and Emperor's New Groove. He wrote the screenplay for and directed The Prophet, based on Khalil Gibran's book. Roger Allers, thank you for joining us. Thank you, hi. You co-directed The Lion King. Take us back to the moment when you got that phone call. I was actually trying to get a different movie started. I got the call from Jeffrey Katzenberg. And oh, I want you to come over and work on this project. And I went, what about, what about this? And he goes, well, you can do that later. Do this first. Were Obviously, you excited? This, this, yeah, well, you know, it, it was a whole process of discovery. It went through several different paths before we got to where we, well, we're happy mm. with it. What prompted <clears throat> you to go from directing a big Disney film to a passion project like The Prophet? It was really appealing to me. I mean, the book, a a lot to me in college. I was with a friend and we were sort of reading it out loud. Before we even came to the end of the book, I just had a very profound experience, a very sort of a shift in consciousness or something. Mm. I just all of a sudden felt a very strong connectedness to everything and it was a very profound feeling. What spiritual aspects in The Lion King carried forth into The Prophet? A large one is sort of the idea of the death not being the ultimate divide, mm. Mm. you know, the sense of continuity. But a lot of the films I've worked on that were the most personal to me. A lot of them had uh, issues uh, about death, and I, mm -hmm. I found that really interesting. How has Disney's animation changed from the golden years to c the contemporary years? You know, we were doing mostly sort of fairy tales. At one point, I remember the studio started focusing more on trying to find stories from different places around the world. After Lion King, which was set in sort of Africa, and they would do Mulan in China, Hunchback in France. So I know, they're just, you know, continuing to explore and try to find fresh yeah. ways to approach subject matter. Now it's time to play a game. Would you rather grab some grub with Pumbaa or Shenzi the hyena? I guess definitely with Pumbaa. Yeah. I mean, it might be <laughs> bugs, but at least they'd be clean. Would you rather cook a meal with Kronk or go dancing with Kuzo? I guess put the meal with Kronk. I think that okay. sounds like more amusing. Would you rather spend a night on the town with the three hyenas from Lion King or the Beast from Beauty and the Beast? I think I'd have to go with the hyenas. Yeah. I think it'd be a wilder time. <laughs> Would you rather vote for Trump or Scar? <laughs> oh. oh! Well, each one might lead to the same result. <laughs> Would you rather dress up as Timon or Ursula for Halloween? I think I'd have to go very campy and, and go for Ursula just yeah. because it's so out there. Shall we talk collectibles? Sure. I love old toys. These old toys from like the 30s were made out of this really hard rubber. I don't know why that's so appealing to me. Maybe it's some deep childhood memory. I mean, I wasn't around in the 30s, but whatever. This is a little obscure. From Pinocchio, when the boys are turned into donkeys on Pleasure Island. I was really thrilled to find that. And I have all the seven dwarfs. I really liked a lot of Donald Ducks. That quacker? And, yeah, that quacker. <laughs> and this is the early design on Donald. I got him off of eBay. I was working at Disney mm -hmm. Studio at the time. And I was so thrilled and I came in in the morning and on my phone, Tony Anselmo, who is also the voice of Donald Duck, he had been bidding against me for this oh. thing. And when I got in, there was this voice message from him in Donald Duck's voice cursing me out. And then there are things like an animation art. I, one of the things oh, I wow. love is like the developmental artwork that was done. This is from Pinocchio and Peter Pan was always my favorite. Peter Pan was really what inspired me to go into animation. I think one of the most beautifully inked films, Sleeping Beauty. Just the design work and the background design work, uh, Ivan Earl's work in that is so beautiful. I also collect the rock posters from the late 60s that in San Francisco. They're kind of psychedelic. If you could own <clears throat> any collectible, what would it be? I'd love to own a Van Gogh. Like I so enjoyed going to the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. It's huge, you know, two floors of all of his paintings. And they're so intense and so beautiful. That would be nice. Roger Allers, thank you again for stopping by and talking animation with us. I'm Heidi Lee, your collector animation. And that wraps it up for this edition of Collector's Cafe. 